Hey class, today we're going to be looking at section 5.5, .5, which is graphs of sine and cosine functions. We're also going to look at some transformations. So from the last lesson, we can kind of review our domain and range here. Uh, domain for each one of these functions are the angle values. And if we think about what kind of angles we're allowed to use, we can use any angles we want. We can go from zero to two pi, or we could keep going around the circle infinitely many times. We can go from zero to infinity. Um, we can also go clockwise around the circle uh, and get negative angles. So we can go from zero to negative infinity. So we can use any angles we want. Our domain for each of these graphs is going to be all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity because the angle values can be whatever they want. Uh, now the range values are a little trickier. So the range values of the cosine, remember that the cosine of an angle equals the x value of the points around the circle. And if our radius is one because we have a unit circle, then our range is gonna go between negative one and one. Similarly, for the sine function, uh, the sine of an angle is the y value of any points as we go around the circle. So our y values, because our radius is one, go between negative one and one as well. All right, so now going down to the graph, so looking at our sine of x function, uh, remember the x values are the angles and the sine graph are the y values. So sine, the y values of the sine are the y values of the points as we go around our circle. And I always use these quadrantial angles, zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, uh, when I'm graphing these. So you can see how I labeled my axes. Uh, and if we look at the sine of zero, the y value of that point is zero. So my first point I'm gonna graph is point zero, zero. If we look up at pi over two, the sine of pi over two is one. So my next point is gonna be pi over two comma one. Uh, sine of pi is zero. So I've got, I'm gonna have the point pi zero. Sine of three pi over two is negative one. So three pi over two comma negative one is our point. And back to two pi, the sine is zero. All right, so let's graph these and see what it looks like. So at zero, zero, I have a point. That's kind of your basic. You'll want to learn that the sine goes through zero, zero without any transformations. Uh, at pi over two, I'm up at one. Pi, I'm at zero. Three pi over two, I'm down at negative one. And two pi, I'm back at zero. And then it keeps going. Um, just kind of cycling through that wave forever. I could also go count, uh, clockwise, sorry, clockwise through my circle to get my negative angles. Negative angles, remember, go this way, negative uh, theta. <laughs> um, so negative pi over two is the same as three pi over two. So that's going to go down to negative one, back to zero, up to one, back to zero. So you can see this wave pattern just kind of keeps going um, in both directions. And I always like to graph one positive um, cycle and one negative cycle. So again, the domain is all real numbers because that represents the angle values and the range goes between negative one and one because of the um, Y values of the points around our circle. So looking at our graph, um, I'm asking, is there a pattern or does the graph repeat? Uh, hopefully you can see that, yes, there is a pattern and it repeats every two pi units, which means that the period, we call this the period of the graph is two pi because that's how long it takes before it repeats again. All right, similarly, we're gonna look at the cosine of x. And if you remember from the unit circle, the cosine of x is the x value. So the cosine of an angle are the x values of the points as we go around the circle. So cosine of the angle is the x value and the sine, oops, I wanted to make this this color, the sine of the angle is the y value. So if we look at all those x values as we go around, uh, the sine, sorry, the cosine of zero is one. 
the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, the cosine of pi is negative 1, the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, and back to 1. So we have the point 0, 1, pi over 2, 0, pi negative 1, 3 pi over 2, 0, and 2 pi, 1. So graphing that, uh, we don't start at 0, 0 for the cosine, we start at 0, 1. So learning those starting points for the sine versus the cosine is going to help you graph these. Uh, pi over 2 is down at 0, negative 1 for pi, back up at 0, and 2 pi goes back up to 1. So one period of the cosine looks like that. It looks a little different than the other one, but once we finish going through our negative angles, which is like going clockwise around our circle, you can see it definitely looks like the same shape as our sign, just with a different starting point. Uh, the domain is still all real numbers because domain are the angle values. The range is still negative one to one. And yes, it repeats every two pi units, just like the other one. All right, so starting our um, transformations, we are going to start with what we call the amplitude which is the same as the vertical uh, stretch or compression, depending on what that number is, the vertical dilation. So for example, if we wanted to graph y equals four sine of x, uh, it's gonna have the same zero, zero starting point, but now when x is pi over two, instead of going up to one, it's gonna go up to four. So it stretches it vertically, it doesn't shift the points, it just stretches them. And then we can go down to negative four, zero, up to four, zero. So you can see this curve. So it's definitely taller than our original without transformations. Um, reviewing our transformations, A values are vertical dilations or stretches or compressions. Uh, the C value is the horizontal shift. Remember that's a uh, left or right, and it goes in the opposite direction as the sign, opposite sign direction, just like our other functions do. Uh, and then we have a vertical shift for a D value, which goes up and down. That is not in the opposite direction. Uh, graphing our sine value here. I'm going to add a D to the end of that. Um, you can kind of see a little bit more of what that amplitude is. The amplitude is the length from the center of your graph up to the top or the center of your graph down to the bottom. So there's your amplitude. Uh, and then we won't worry too much about this period here. Uh, remember, our period starts at 2 pi. And then if there were a B value, we would divide that by B, but we're actually not going to worry about that. So here, if B is 1, then the period would equal 2 pi over 1, which is just 2 pi. Um, and that just represents one revolution um, of our circle. So don't worry too much about it. You're going to do more values of B when you take pre-calculus. All right, so now graphing uh, sine and cosine with transformations. These are the steps that I like to do. So the first thing I like to do is identify the vertical shift, which is D. Uh, and I like to draw a dashed line where that vertical shift is, if there is one. Uh, then I like to use the amplitude, remember that's the A value, to find the top and bottom of my curve, identify any horizontal shifts with the C value, place your first point, and then graph four other points or more, um, whatever. I like to just graph both sides of my x-axis, positive and negative points. So I have at least two uh, full periods is what I like. All right, so here I've already kind of labeled my x-axis with my angles. Notice I skipped the pi over 2, which would have been here, and the 3 pi over 2 over here. Just kind of a little shortcut. They're still there. I just don't want to have to write them every single time. Uh, the sine of x starts with 0, 0. Oops, 0, 0. And then my amplitude is 2. So instead of going up to 1 and down to negative 1, I'm going to go up to 2. 
and down to negative two. So we can kind of wave our way through the graph there, going all the way down to negative two, back up to zero, up to positive two, back down to zero. I love drawing these graphs. They're so pretty. All right, negative three cosine of x. So cosine, remember, starts at one at the top, but we're stretching it to three. And then we also have a reflection. So remember, our negative in front reflects it over the x-axis. So instead of starting up at uh, zero, three, I'm gonna start at zero, negative three. And then I'm gonna go up to meet my x-axis back up to three, down and down. So it looks similar to the other cosine, but flipped upside down. And then I can go the other direction. We always wanna use our negative angles as well. And try to make sure that these are curved and not like jagged lines. We're not making straight lines with points. We're making nice curves through our graphs. All right, let's look at what happens with a vertical shift up two. So I'm going to draw a dashed line up two on my y-axis. Uh, and then if we look at our amplitude, my amplitude is gonna be a half. So I'm gonna go up and down a half from that shifted value of uh, up two. The cosine starts at our top, the top of our um, wave and then it goes down to the middle and then down to the bottom. And notice I'm only going to the little half marks above and below our shifted line up and up. All right, so this is what this one looks like. It's a little weird when there's a fraction there. <laughs> All right, uh, negative sine of x minus three. So again, we're gonna shift this down three. So I like to draw a little dashed line to represent that. And then my amplitude hasn't changed, so it's gonna be up one and down one. The sine starts with zero, zero, and then usually goes up from there, but there's a reflection here. So I'm gonna go down from my zero. So I'm gonna go down and then up and then up and then down. And then I'm gonna go this direction. All right, uh, let's look at what happens when we have a horizontal shift. So here I have a horizontal shift Remember this is pi over two to the left. So the opposite direction as we think with the sine. Um, so pi over two to the left, the original sine graph, I'm just gonna kind of remind us here, if I go up to one, down to negative one, because it hasn't been stretched, the original sine graph starts at zero, zero. But I'm gonna take that point, ooh, let's see if I can take that point, and I'm gonna move it to the left, pi over two. There we go. So that's my new starting point. And then I'm gonna go, ooh, maybe I can do, ooh, I'm gonna play with this for a second. So if I do my original points without the shift, my sine graph would have looked like this. Now, if I take all of those points that I just made and I move them to the left, pi over two units, it moved them all for me, nice. So you can see that shift. So sometimes it helps if you just kind of draw yourself an arrow and mention that that's your new starting point, that's where you shifted, and then it's really clear to see what that transformation was that you used. And if you notice, this ended up, ended up, the same as y equals the cosine of x. If we look at the cosine of x graph, that's what this is. So shifting the sine over pi over two to the left uh, gives us the cosine graph, kind of fun. All right, and then the last example, I'm just gonna throw everything at you here. 
uh, three different transformations. Let's see how this goes. If you want to pause and try it yourself first, you can do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is shift it down three. Whoops. All right. And then I'm going to have an amplitude of two. So I'm going to go up and down two from my shifted line. And the cosine graph usually starts up at the top of our wave and does this. But if I take those points and shift them pi over four to the right, now pi over four is a little funky. Um, pi over four is half of pi over two. So I'm gonna shift these to the right, ooh, to the right. So see how I'm, how I'm moving these points. I'm gonna go to the right, just half of pi over two. So pi over four. And then that's kind of my new shift. So then I can, um, if I wanted to follow this pattern, so every two spaces on my graph, it's gonna kind of move back to the next point. So every two spaces, notice now I'm in between my points that I'm usually at because I shifted pi over four. All right. And I kind of missed there, but there we go. So there's a lot going on there. Sometimes it's nice to draw the original cosine function and then do that horizontal shift, um, physically move those points. Sometimes that makes more sense. All right, last two examples. Uh, we have a graph and we need to find the equation from the graph. So the first thing we can do is look for the center of the graph. So here it looks like the center, my graph is still at zero. So there's no vertical shift or you can say none. And then the amplitude is going to be the value from here to the center. So whatever that length is, and it looks like that length is three. So that's my amplitude is gonna be three. And then we need to decide if it's gonna be sine or cosine. So you can actually make that decision um, by finding whatever starting point you want. So if I wanna make, for example, this my starting point, if I'm going to make that my starting point, then you can think of it, it's like shifted from here. And if I'm shifting a center point, then I'm going to use the sine graph because the sine starts at zero, zero. So if I decide to use sine, and then I would have a horizontal shift of pi over four to the right, then I can write my equation from here. I could have used cosine uh, start with sine would be here. If I wanted to shift this point, this would have been the new starting point with cosine. So if I decided to use a cosine graph, I would have said that this shifted over um, three pi over four to the right. So it's just a little bit different. I'm gonna use sine because it's a little simpler, I think. All right, so my graph or my equation is gonna be y equals the amplitude of three times the sine of x minus pi over four, because I went to the right, and then I didn't have any vertical shifts, so that's it. If you did uh, cosine, you would have had three cosine of x minus three pi over four, if you had decided to do it that way. All right, and last example here. So we do have a vertical shift. I like to draw that dashed line through the center of my wave. So I can see what that vertical shift was. It looked like it was down one. If we look down here is negative two, so this is negative one. Uh, and then my amplitude from there, because we're counting by halves, my amplitude from here to here is actually just a half. So we have vertically compressed it. Uh, now, if I use this as my starting point, then I don't need to do a horizontal shift. So if I use that as my starting at the top of my wave, remember if, the, if I'm starting at the top of the wave, that's for a cosine graph. So I don't have a horizontal shift if I use that one. If I use sine, I'll have to shift it horizontally. Uh, so I'm gonna use cosine because it makes it a little bit simpler for this problem.
All right, so I'm going to have y equals uh, 1 half times the cosine of x and then minus 1. Notice the minus 1 is not in parentheses, so that represents that vertical shift. And that's it for the